Hey everyone, welcome back to SSD's Little Bits. In today's video, we'll continue to dive deeper into the technical details and have a look at a real-life example of a stored XSS attack. This XSS vulnerability was reported to SSD by one of our independent security researchers who discovered this vulnerability in Roundcube Webmail. For those of you who don't know, Roundcube Webmail is a free browser-based open-source webmail solution written in PHP. The vulnerability found allows attackers to craft email messages containing malicious HTML and execute JavaScript code in the context of the vulnerable app application when a victim user opens the message. This could allow attackers to impersonate the victim or in a worst case gain access to sensitive information like plain text credentials or even confirmation emails. Now, before we get into the exploit of this vulnerability, we will need to give a little bit of background information for the application itself. Roundcube is supposed to display HTML only after proper sanitization has been made. To do that, they're using an HTML sanitizer. That sanitizer contains a vulnerability which is found in a modification made to it adding rcube underscore was html.php to the SVG tag in order to properly handle XML namespaces. The HTML part containing the vulnerability looks like this. This part is vulnerable because these two values are added to the dump without the proper sanitization. Now that we know where we can find the vulnerability, there are a few things we need to know. First, since we want to control the root element, we need to know that Roundcube automatically appends a default preamble to the HTML message if it lacks the head tag. Second, when at least one SVG tag is present and the HTML string is not, the message is passed using a DOM node that requires a valid XML document to be injected. And finally, since a DOM node decodes any HTML during the parsing process, it's possible to use ampersand quote semicolon to escape hard-coded double quotes and ampersand lower than or ampersand greater than to escape the SVG element altogether. Now that we know all of this, we can get into exploiting the vulnerability itself. There are a few ways to actually exploit this vulnerability. Let me just start with showing you the JavaScript code getting triggered, and then we will look at how to exfiltrate information from within the Roundcube mailbox. The simpler way to exploit this vulnerability is to simply use the onload event. An onload event occurs when an object has been loaded. In this case, we are going to inject this script with the resulting HTML looking like this. This more elaborate exploit utilizes the vulnerability using zip download plugin to fetch the whole inbox as a zip mbox file and sending this to a web server controlled by the attacker via post request, as we can see here. Now, if the XSS attack is successful, then an inbox.mbox.zip file is created in the current directory. The UID post field can also be an array, thus allowing to exfiltrate the inbox in chunks. So, to sum everything up, in order to exploit this XSS vulnerability, first the attacker creates a web server to receive the victim's inbox. Moving on, the attacker prepares the JavaScript for the attack. The third step is that the attackers send the email containing the JavaScript to the victim, and finally, the victim opens the infected email, thus sending their inbox to the attacker and finalizing the XSS attack. In very simplified steps, we'll see attacker prepares web server, attacker prepares JavaScript, attacker sends email to victims, the victim opens their email, and without knowing, sending the entire inbox to the attacker. If you found this interesting, take a look at the full vulnerability in our advisory page, found in the description below. In our next video, we'll start discussing SQL injections. In the meantime, everything we discussed today and additional materials can be found in the description below. Thanks for tuning in, we'll see you in the next video.